You're gonna make a lot of mistakes as a pilot, but if there's one mistake that you wanna avoid your entire career, it's landing without a clearance. That's why in this video, we're gonna take a look at a situation where a private jet aircraft landed without a clearance. We're gonna see how that happened, what they could have done to prevent it, and when you hear the pilot's excuse for why it happened, I'm gonna let you be the judge of whether it's a valid reason or not. Now, the scenario takes place in Bozeman, Montana at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. The airport sits right here, just north of Yellowstone National Park. Obviously, it's a, a fairly popular destination, especially during the summer for people looking to get out to explore all the parks. You know, it is a Class D airspace with an operational control tower, and this takes place during the daytime, so the control tower is operational when this incident happens. Now, I went over to Google Maps and immediately saw that this was outdated. You've only got one runway depicted here with a grass strip, uh, and then you can see kind of the, uh, the crosswind runway there. But if you go over to the actual airport diagram, which this is current through 15 June 23, so always make sure you have updated uh, charts when you're flying. The main runway, 9,000 feet long, runway 1230. There's this other runway, it's 5,000 feet, runway 1129, and then there's that crosswind runway and the grass strip that I referred to. Now, when the situation starts, the uh, traffic is landing to the southeast, so they're planning on landing on runway 12, and here's what happens. Happens. We have the airport, Chesapeake 529. Chesapeake 529, cleared visual approach, runway 12, contact tower 118.2. You have a good day. 1182, cleared to visual 12, Chesapeake 529. All right, Jet Speed 529 is the aircraft call sign, and I actually had to do a little bit of digging because this is a call sign I wasn't familiar with. You can see Jet Speed is used by Executive Jet Management, their designator EJM, so EJM 529, when you plug that into FlightAware, you can see the tracking is not available per request from the owner operator, so unfortunately, I don't have any of the flight data to pull into this to see kind of what that flight path looked like uh, or orientation for them going into the airport. But if we go over to Executive Jet Management's website, we can see it's a NetJets company. They highlight down here that they've got you know highly experienced pilots with 9,000 plus hours is the average flight time of most of their pilots, and they have over 200 aircraft. So you've got two pretty experienced pilots flying the aircraft, and it's a nice VFR day where they can visually acquire the field, and that's why they say we have the airport when they're talking to approach control, and that allows approach control to hand them off to tower and clear them for the visual approach. Now, if I'm the pilot in this situation, one of the first things that I'm gonna do when I switch to that frequency that approach gives me for tower is number one, I'm gonna listen to make sure there's nobody else talking on the radio because I don't wanna step on somebody else's takeoff clearance or their landing clearance. Clearance. And as soon as I hear that no one's talking on the radio, that's when I'm going to talk to Tower to try to get my landing clearance. Now, when I make that radio call, if I don't hear anything back, I'm going to give it a few seconds and try to make that call again. Because when you're cleared for a visual approach, you still have plenty of time to make several radio calls or several attempts to contact the tower prior to the point really where you've got to execute a go around or do something else if you don't have that clearance to land. Now in this situation, I'm not sure what's going on in the aircraft or what the pilots are doing, but the tower controller makes several attempts to contact them on the radio and never gets a response. There are some other aircraft in the traffic pattern, but they're not gonna be a factor uh, for Speedjet 529 that's you know essentially about to land at this point. Tower does, however, reach out to Approach Control, and we know this because Approach Control also tries to call them on the radio on the Approach Control frequency, thinking maybe they just haven't <laughs> switched frequencies, uh, but Approach Control isn't able to contact them either. And unfortunately, the pilots just continue to fly the aircraft and eventually land on runway 12, and then this happens. Do you copy we're going over to Jet, Jet Speed 529? <laughs> Jet Speed 529, Tower, nice to talk to you. Uh, you just landed without a clearance, sir. What we uh, announced? Now at this point, they're on the ground and magically all of a sudden they're able to talk to the tower controller. So we know there's not a problem with the radio. We know they're on the right frequency. Well, at least at this point, they're on the right frequency. And you're about to hear their excuse for why they landed without clearance. But before we listen to that, let me remind you that if you're flying into an airport with an operational control tower, then you need a clearance to land. And if you're not getting one on the radio, then there's a lot of things that you can do to troubleshoot. First, I would make sure I'm on the right frequency. And if I am, then I would try that frequency on a different radio. If that's not working, I would try switching back to approach control and talking to them. If I can't get anybody on the radio, I would try making a call on guard. As long as I have enough fuel, I'm gonna execute the published missed approach 
enter back into the pattern again, squawking Nordo or squawking emergency, and finally look for that green light signal from tower, and then I'm gonna go ahead and land and hopefully talk to somebody once I'm on the ground. However, in this situation, listen to why the pilot said they landed without a clearance. Head <laughs> speed 529, tower, nice to talk to you. Uh, you just landed without a clearance, sir. What we uh, announced? Okay, I was trying to reach you the entire time you're on final, sir, and we I, I didn't hear anything from you at all. Yeah, I was talking the whole time. Okay, they said they were talking the whole time, but they don't offer any explanation other than that as to why they landed without clearance. And really, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me because there's only a couple possible scenarios that could have happened if they were talking the whole time. Number one is they hear Tower calling them on the radio, and so they're continuing to make radio calls, but for some reason their transmissions aren't going out. And if that's the case, like you're not just gonna clear yourself to land, you're gonna figure out what's going on and actually talk to Tower. However, if they're not hearing tower and they're continuing to talk on the radio, then they're probably on the wrong frequency because nobody else is hearing them either. Again, I would not land without clearance. I'd try to figure out what's going on and fix that situation. But I wanna know what you think, so be sure to drop a comment below. Check out this other video on the screen here, and I'll see you next time.